right, it's 10 o'clock, and we're going to get ready to get started. We're going to give a, a song, same song, and we'll keep doing it. And the song is very simple. That's why I like it, because people can join in if they so desire. And the song is this little thing with light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Sing it with me. Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, so I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, asking you to clear our minds, clear our bodies, clear our spirits. Lord God, we come to you for peace this morning. We want to get a better understanding of your word because we know that even in the midst of our circumstances, even in the midst of all that we're going through, your word can provide peace. So we ask you for the peace that only your word can provide. Give us knowledge, give us understanding. In the holy and magnificent name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 It's good to see everybody this morning. How you doing? All right. We've been talking. I was telling brother that um, I had Psalms as being plural, but Psalm, if I look at my Bible, it's singular. S P S A L. Yeah, so we want to make sure that's just something that I noticed. And we've been going through the book of Psalms, uh, 23rd Psalm to be exact. And we're going to keep we're going to keep going that way today. Uh, <clears throat> last week we did one verse. Today we might do more than one verse. But last week we did verse number four. Today we're going to do verse number five. We're going to do verse number five. And somebody. It'll be so kind. <laughs> we need to pass out those swords over there. I'm going to go ahead and read it. <laughs> Psalm. 23rd Psalm. And the 5th verse. Somebody read that for me. I want to I read what the King James said. But I think you guys have, have new, new international versions. Let me see what this is. Let me see what kind of version this is. Yeah, NIVs. All right, and the King James says that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So what, what does the NIV say? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Mm, yes. You prepare a table before me. Now, what? somebody tell me what does that mean? What What does it mean to prepare a table? For Go me, ahead. it means that um, everything I've been through and everything, my table has already been placed before me and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, I put it. Didn't chill and just wait and everything because it all fall in place and stuff. Just got to keep the faith. Okay, so That's everything it. you've been through, mm -hmm. he's already prepared a way out. Mm -hmm. Everything. Wow. <laughs> One thing about you go against you, you're going to lose every time. Yes. That's it. So everything oh, you've been through. That's what the table is there for. He prepared the table. What, do you, what does it mean to you? Anybody? Um, basically, same thing he just said. I mean, it speaks on the same thing. Okay. Table already been set. Just, table been set. It's already been set. You know, so so one thing we agree at is that on this particular, this is not this is a table, but we this we talking about some on the table yeah, that we yes. need. Yeah. 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 So we talking about something. What what is it? What, what about you? Oh, what do I think? Now um, prepares the table before. Now prepares the table. That uh, we're all. Like neutral, we're all neutral. 
Because oh. if you're sitting with your enemies, you're not fighting with them, right? Right, right, right. You know, well, one of the, we I need to think about something that we need. One of the things that we need, okay, let's, I hate to keep that. One of the things that we need to, to, to live is money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the things we need. All right? Something else we need to survive is uh, good uh, health. Good health, that's the sign of health. Yeah. That's a, uh, uh, another thing that we need, another thing that I'm just trying to put some stuff that we need, uh, our, our friends. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know you know what? It's funny. You, you guys don't have friends. Don't lose that word, friend. <laughs> I just said that. I, I don't know if you got friends. Oh, <laughs> See? <laughs> no, I say that because in generalistic in society, we... Friends are something that we don't, you know, we don't, it's not as important as it used to be. You know, yeah. I, 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 we used to watch our parents have friends and, you know, have, you know, mm -hmm. like you say, matter of fact, when you buy a house, you say, I'm going to have this room right here so when I have friends over, right. we can sit up. You know, that's what it used to be. I don't know if we do that anymore. Yeah. But, you know, we used to say, yeah, we're going to do this so that when my friend, when we and my friends go out, you know, I'm going to get this outfit because when I go out with my friend, you know, but we, at this point, I don't know. Do, do you have a lot of friends? I don't know. I'm just, we just, <laughs> you don't? Okay, because I thought, do, do we, I'm going to be honest here. I thought I was the only one that didn't have friends. My wife even said, man, you, you, you need to get some friends. You know, I, one time I was, I was listening to Michelle Obama and she said, uh, President Obama needs to get some friends, you know? <laughs> well, I say he can feel... Uh, but very few fall in between. Yeah, it, it's hard. So here, we. Need, but guess what? We need friends. We, 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 you know, I we got to have Lord some... Friend. That's my enemy. That's your enemy. If I call you, you my enemy. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord. Friends. Friends. Yeah. These are my, these are my friends. Right, right. okay. But well, one thing about it, we, we, we need to find a way to have yeah. friends. We got to, yeah. you know... Because it, it's no fun to just talk to yourself. Well, you know, it's, you know. Friends are the best for you. I mean, these are my friends. Yeah, sure. Right, that's right. The ones I used to have are my friends. The ones you're friends. <laughs> that, that's one of the big problems. Yeah. We, and like you say, we, somebody, you know one of the biggest problems that we can have is choosing friends. Yeah. Because the reality is the people that we think are our friends are, like you say, our enemies. Right. And the people that are our enemies <laughs> We want to make them our friends. You know what I'm saying? For instance, like my mom say, don't go hang out with those guys. Why she say that? Why you just boring? You know what? You think they're your friends. They not your friends. Mm -hmm. But go hang out with these people. Mom, I don't want to hang out with those people because they ain't doing nothing. No, nah, that's what you, you see what I'm saying? So we're not even in the reality. We're not able to choose our friends wisely. So you know what we have to do? We have to use Jesus Christ to go that way, let him, what a friend we have in Jesus. So what I'm saying is we have to, uh, instead of trying to choose a friend, let's choose Jesus and then we'll associate with people. I think somebody said earlier, associates, uh -huh. you know, and we'll have an association of people that we associate with through Jesus Christ. You know, I think that's best because that way when your quote unquote friends do you wrong, they really doing Jesus Christ wrong because really I got Jesus between me and you. Right. I, wanted, when, um, I, I got this peculiar business where, where I work with a lot of people and when I do, one of the first things I do is I have to establish the fact that we've got to have Jesus Christ between us because if we don't and you do me wrong, you have done me wrong. Where if, if I get Jesus Christ in our, between us, then if you do... If you do me wrong, you did Jesus Christ wrong. You see what I'm saying? I'm staying with a so-called friend of mine now, and my knocker pants go. <laughs> Read what? He not he did what? Knocker pants. I asked, had all the clothes for them. They say he so-called moved them for me. Wow. So my best pair of pants is gone. Gone. Uh, knocker yeah, pants. Yeah, That's so-called friend for you there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for a friend. Don't use that word, friend. I'm not going to call you friend. If I call you friend, you my enemy, bro. Wow. I don't use that word. I'm going to so call you so Okay, here we go. Here we go. He knows something else we might need. Uh, I don't know. We may or may not need, but we need transportation of cars. Yeah, yeah. Cars. Yeah, you need transportation. Man, yeah, nah, yeah, transportation. Nah, you need transportation. Nah, I do. 
Give me something else you think we might need. Give me something, brother, that you think we need. Food, food, clothes, shelter, spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. This is food, a ham, a chicken. It's food, the spiritual growth. Let's put the cross right there. Huh? It was like I drew it out. Yeah. <laughs> so we got money, uh, get health, friends, car, food, spiritual growth. Uh, we need a house. Love. Ooh, love. Okay. Very good. What you got, brother? Uh, uh, hey, hold on. Uh, uh, advisor. Uh, advisor. Yeah, you know, let me tell you something. When you... Get in, like all of us, man, not just me. When you find yourself in a position where you need, like, let's just, I gotta go back, let's just say money. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. If you go to somebody and say, Give me, could you please give me $50? Mm-hmm. Or could you just tell me a way where I can make $50? Which one you think is the most, the, the best way? Make $50. Which one make $50. $50. Yeah. So, advice is better. That's that's better than somebody giving you money. Yeah. Yeah. If they give you advice. Yeah. I'm going to make it anyway. I'm going to earn it. And pass it right. No, yeah. you, one of my point is, when you, all I need for you to do, my friend, is give me some advice on how I can, can get there. Because mm-hmm. you tell me how to get there. Now, if you give me a fish, okay, I'm good. I just ate a great meal. But if you give me a, show me how to make me a fishing pole and show me where a good spot is and show me what's the best bait, <laughs> Man, I'm finna eat every day now. Yeah, yeah. Right. See? Because you gave me good advice. Mm-hmm. So so advice is 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 critical. Mm-hmm. How do I make advice? Let's see. Somebody talking. It's I just somebody I got talking. A whole bunch of advisors, so I know I do. Advice, yeah. I got a whole bunch yeah. of them, man. I yeah. Mean, I listen to their words before I think about mine, even though I'm open book. I still go to them and everything and talk it out because I could put myself in a, a situation that I ain't had no bit of dog on being in and stuff like that. Mom done did the numbers and stuff, and I'm glad. Right. Blessed that I got a little time, but sure, I wouldn't have had nothing about did that move right there. It ain't time for it. He, he, he just said something very important. He just whizzed through it, but it's critically important. He said, he said, Mom and them did the numbers. Yeah. Numbers. Stick, stick Listen. Numbers, numbers. What, what, <laughs> numbers are so important. Yes. When I'm listening to somebody talk, right? Like I listen, like I was listening to the debate. Me and my wife were listening to the debate the other day. With Warnock and uh, yeah. Le- Left, whatever shit. And you know, I, I don't, you know, even though I'm gonna vote for Warnock regardless of what, even, I'm, just, I'm just gonna vote for. I'm, that's just I don't know. I normally don't get into political world, but I said this. She said, "Is he making sense or is she making sense?" I said, "Listen, this is how you figure out who." giving you the best information they're going to include numbers in their speech if you talking all the time and you don't never use numbers time how much how far you don't never lose numbers in your conversation you're just talking you got to put some numbers in your form we, we just we just talk we ain't even got nowhere yet but we're just talking about stuff that's on the table let's go back over our list of things that's on the table we got money we got health we got friends, we got transportation, we got food, we got uh, spiritual fitness, we got a house, we got love, we got advice, and we got numbers. All these things are on the table, right? If we get this, if we get this conglomerate of things on the table, we're going to be in pretty good shape. But I want y'all to know something. Right now, we, as we talked about these things, we talked about us missing some of these pieces. You know what I'm saying? Some of this stuff that we have, some of this stuff that we don't have. Okay, but this particular scripture says, look, he says, he, look, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He's going to fix it in front of everybody. Right in, look, now you know you ain't got no money, but in front of everybody, God going to bless you with money. You know you sick, but in front of everybody, God is going to bless you with good health. You know you don't have no friends, but in front of everybody, people are going to say, I wish I had friends like you. 
transportation, food. He's going to bless you. He's in front of, in the presence of the people, not just in front of everybody, but these particular people are going to be what they call haters. Everybody know what haters are. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of them. A bunch of them. <laughs> so right while they look it, they're going to be standing there and say, I know he ain't going to make it out of this. I know he ain't going to make it out of this situation. I know she's not going to make it through this situation. While they're in the midst of saying it, God said he's going to bless you with those things. Yeah, make my enemy my footstool. He will bless you. Does anybody believe that? Of course. Yeah. I do. I've been blessed. I've been, I've been cleaned up for three weeks and three days. I've been blessed more than I got in my whole life. Now. Wow. You ain't seen nothing yet. No, no, no. You ain't seen nothing yet. 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 Wow. Hey, hold on. Listen, what, what you, what's your name first, brother? Shasta. Shasta? Shasta. Shasta. Brother Shasta said, in order for you to be clean, in order for you to be cleaned up, what do you have to be, brother? Dirty. Right. You know, Everybody has a come on, I'm glad Everybody you went on here and said that, brother. Because, see, You're some right. people could have stood out and said, I'm glad I don't have to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it sounds good. Yeah. You, you, you never get the way you want without being hair dirt stolen. Yes, sir. Everybody had dirt stolen. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, you, you, you know what? You know. Let me let me clarify what dirt is, just in case you didn't know. Dirt is sin. Everybody has sin. Now, now you might say, "Come on, you don't know me, man. I ain't got no sin." Mm -hmm. Well, according to the Bible, it says, "All." Everybody say, "All." All. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Born into sin. Born into sin. You heard what they said. Here's the thing. They said, you can lead a horse to water, but what? Hey, you came I can sit here and prepare this table with everything you need. All these stuff sitting on the table. And you won't even come to the table to take it off the table. All you got to do is come and sit at the table. Yeah. You, you, you don't have to prepare it. You don't have to do anything. Just come to the table. <laughs> right? If you go to a good restaurant, you don't have to go right there and cook the steak. I mean, you might not like steak or whatever, or the shrimp, or whatever you like. You don't have to cook it. Why? They're going to cook it. And they're going to prepare it for you and bring it to you. All you got to do is sit there and wait for it. The same way God did. That God going to do it the same way. But he's going to bring you way more than some steak and shrimp, though. See, he's going to bring you all these things that we talked about. But you got to come to the table to get it. See, understand something about a table. If this table were right here, if one of the legs was broken, it would fall. It would lean, right? Mm -hmm. This table wouldn't be no good. One thing about a table is that it needs to be stable. You understand? All of us need stability in our life. We Listen, here's the thing. We need to go back. We play our tape back to what we agreed to God that we were going to do, that we're not doing right now. We told God, if you would help me in this situation, I'll do that. Huh? And listen, brother, let me tell you something. You said you've been clean for X amount of time right now. Well, understand something. The longer you stay clean, the bigger fish you are to the enemy. Yes, sir. Because yeah. yeah. if I can pull him out again, I'm him again. then he going to fall. The devil took you every yeah. day. Every day. And bigger, bigger, bigger. And he caught you with quite a lot of things. Yeah. So what you got to know is right now you got to get some stability. That's what you need. You got to have a table. You got to have, because if, if, God, if God put this stuff on a table that's not stable, it would tip over and fall. You couldn't get at it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Here, we got a beautiful meal right in front of us, but the table is not stable. And now it tips over and all the food goes on the floor. That, that turns a, a dream into a nightmare. You understand? The stability. So the point is, we need, the table represents stability. 
You understand? When your enemies come, you know how you know how we do. We're we one way around these people, and we're another way around these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to impress our friends. Y'all might not be that, but some people are like. That's right. You're gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. You one way around this group of people. Yeah, but then you go around the corner, you a whole new. I see, like, man, wait a minute, man. You the same guy. We were just over here. Now, how you get over here and you acting like this? I'm a whole different person in my neighborhood than I am up here. You see? It's called fraud. Fraud. It's Faking. called being Faking. unstable. Faking. It's called, no, here it is, another word. It's called being double minded. Wow. The Bible says, and I believe, that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Wow. Yeah, you, once you get double minded, you unstable. Play both sides of the track. You playing both sides of, and you know what Jesus said? I would rather you be, you could be cold or you could be hot, but don't be lukewarm and try to play both sides. There you go. I can't do nothing with you, there. There you go. I don't care if you way, way, way wrong. I can deal with you. Yeah. I just, I just, I just deal with that now. Double standard thinking. My neighborhood, I'm different. I'm not meaning to be, but I'm, I'm dealing with. I mean, I'm going to church and trying to trying to yeah, do it. Trying to get right. I, I, I realize that I am different. My neighborhood down here. Yeah. Because I've been known to fight all the time, so I'm still there. Wow. So what I hear you saying is, you need yeah. to get stable. Yes, sir. I do. Yes, sir. I know I'm secure. You need stability. Yes, sir. You know what? This place <laughs> Look, better than stability. All, all of us mean. Do you know that? Uh, uh, a stable man looks better than an unstable man. I mean, he's more attractive to to yeah, yeah. just stability. Yeah. Stability, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know. So last night, uh, my, me and my wife had to walk back from I've got a brown car drive, uh -huh. and we were talking. And you know, I'm supposed to get baptized by month. Wow. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going our way. I'm going here first. Come on. He yeah, was talking about um, you know, this person better than me. I'm going to jump over him. She said. You can't do that. You're, you're trying to get better. And then you realize it. I can't say I'm a the crap out of somebody. You know what I mean? I'm trying, but it's still, the old me still in me a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, sir. But, but here's the news flash. The old you ain't going nowhere. He gonna be you're waiting for to opportunity to hop back yeah, in there in the game. You know how you, you know you, 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 you see, you see the basketball game. You got some players on the bench. You got some players on the, on the floor. The players on the bench, they, if you really good at what you do, you wait, coach. Put me in, coach. Coach, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a difference in this game if you put me in, coach. And then we go as far as to say we lost because the coach didn't put me in. You know. So my point is, the the dirty. It's not going to just go away. No. The no, sin no. is not going to just... I, I hate to be, be the bearer of bad news, but it's just... It's not going to just say, you know what? He just said he's going to start following God, so I'm going to leave him alone. That's not how it's going to work. Huh? All this stuff is sitting on your table ready for you, but because you got this sin, one of the legs of the table, you done broke one of the legs on the table. So all of this good stuff here waiting on you is no good because when you sit at the table, it's going to tip over and fall on the ground. Yeah, see? But we need stability. I'm glad you asked. Well, how do I get the stability? Because I've tried and I've failed. Matter of fact, I'm failing right now. Matter of fact, my, even though you see my ship looks like from a distance my ship is going across my ship is sinking uh, so <laughs> now the good news at least you know your ship is sinking some of us don't even know our ship is sinking we don't even know we gonna be the last one to find out when the ship is too much water in there. now it's too late but I need you to know your, you got some you got some leaks in your ship. You got dirty. All of us need to be cleaned up, as the brother explained. All of us. I'm in the two. And how do we get cleaned up? We got to get a stable table. And what does a stable table look like? I'm glad you asked. We got to have Jesus Christ. He, he, he stabilizes us. The reason that Jesus Christ can stabilize us so well is because he is with us. 
He'll sit, he'll be with us always, even until the end of the earth. But Jesus said, it'd be better for you, though, if I leave in the person, but I'm going to leave with you with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Right. Why? The Holy Spirit some, is also known as a comforter. The thing about the fact that the Holy Spirit being a comforter is society has given us this blanket thing that we call a comforter. And it keeps us warm, right? And if we get too warm, we can take it off. And if we get too cold, we can put it back on. We can slide it down. We can cut. We're controlling the comforter. I'm in my comfort zone. What does that mean? I control the temperature. I can make it hotter or colder. I'm in my comfort zone. I've got enough money to pay my bills. All of these things we're in control of. But Jesus Christ says the comforter that I'm leaving with you, he tells you what to do. You don't tell him what to do. Right. See, this is different. See, we're used to saying, I'm comfortable because I'm calling the shots. But the Holy Spirit comforts you because he calls the shots. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because we need to be stable. Everybody say stable. stable. We need stability. stability. And where does the stability come from? The Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ has left for us, and he described the Holy Spirit as the comforter. And this comforter tells you what to do. You don't tell him what to do. But the good thing is, he knows the answers and you don't. When we act like we do. We act, that's, my, that's my point. When we act like we do, we're unstable. Yeah, we sta we, 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 finna, we finna knock all this stuff off the table. You know, we start saying stuff like, I don't need my wife anyway. That's because we want to do what we want to do. I'm just, I mean, some people say that. Come on. God can give you some, you ask for, then if you want to do what you're supposed to do. Oh, take it. Yeah. Okay, it. Man. No, it's up. It. And it's because we unstable. Now, hold on. God don't take it back. This is what happened. You know what? I don't need that car anyway. It ain't that you don't need the car. You just want to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm finna go pawn the title to my car. Yeah. I say, I be playing scratch off tickets. Mm -hmm. Damn, I need some money. Yeah. Yeah. I want $500 Sunday. Wow. $500. Come back Monday, it ain't $500. More. That's $1,000. $1,000. Yesterday, I had no money in my pocket. Wow. I ain't paid no bills. Two. Yesterday, win. What's the win? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they win. So $1,000, spent $1,000 in three days. Three days. Mm -hmm. I ain't paid no bills. Yeah. <laughs> and you listen. You, wait, you heard me say I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't do what I had agreed I was gonna do. Why? Because I'm unstable. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, y'all better listen to this guy. He's trying to tell you, be careful what you ask for. You might not be ready. Might not be hey, ready. Hey, hey, hey. You might not be ready. Yeah. Look, look. Does everybody know what depression is? Depression. Check it out. I'm, I'm, here's the thing. I'm depressed because I don't have money. Here's the problem. Now you got way more money than you ever thought you'd have, and you still depressed. Wait. I'm depressed because I got bad health. Now you're healed beyond your what you ever thought. Guess what? You're still depressed. I'm depressed because my friends don't like me. Now you got friends all around you, and you're still depressed. I'm depressed because I don't have a car. I've got 10 cars. You're still depressed. My point is that these things that we describe that are good for us uh -huh. on the table, they, they're not the answer. Still dirty. We're still unstable. 
the table is still ready to tip yeah. over. Even though you got the thousand dollars, you still were dirty. You still was unstable. So here is the, here here is what we should do. Let me suggest this. Let us receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Right? Let's do that. Yeah. And then. Guess what? I can have no money. I could be sick. I can have no friends, no car. But I'm still could be. I could be stable. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the equation is Jesus Christ equals stability. Right. Right. See, all of those things are materialistic. Materialistic. There Come and go. go. There you go. <laughs> Come and go. All yeah. these up yeah. The power is in Jesus. That's the power is in you. I think you're the one about. We need spiritual health. Yeah. Spiritual growth. growth. Spiritual growth. Growth. It's simple. Yeah, here, here, and then, hold on for you, sister. The thing about spiritual growth is, what does spiritual growth look like? Here's the thing. I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm going to church. That's spiritual growth. But the reality of it is, those are re religiosity, those things that we do religiously. That's, the, the, that's religion, right? Why is that religion? Because if one day I mess around here and I don't read my Bible, one day I mess around here and I don't and I don't fast. One day I mess around here and don't pray. Like you know, we don't have time to pray. We got all the time in the world, but we don't have time to pray. We don't make time to pray. What it is. So the point is, even spiritual growth, right? It's on the table and we need it. It's still we could be unstable because we we've been messing around. We even reading our Bible like we supposed to. Like talk, talk, but you gotta can't walk. walk. There you go. We but we gotta do to get stable is just focus on getting Jesus Christ. Do that. That's all. Yeah, that's all, man. Just get Jesus Christ. That way, even if I don't fast, if I don't pray, if I don't go to church, I still got Jesus Christ. Huh? Yes, sir. He, the day, tomorrow, and forevermore. I don't have a house, but I got Jesus Christ. I can have 10 cars without Jesus Christ, and I'm unstable. Huh? If that's, if that's not true, then there should be no divorces. There should be no suicides. There should be none of that stuff, no drug abuse in Hollywood. It should be nothing. I'm saying when you're rich, if that's the case, if I got everything, there should be no need for none of that. Uh, but is it, is, do you think that there's still divorces? And do you think that there's still suicides? And do you think that there's still, you know, a drug abuse in Hollywood where people are rich, do you think that stuff still happens? Yeah. Yeah. If y'all said no, I, I'm going to have to wake you up. <laughs> know, right? and, and look, here's the thing. We have got, to, all we've got to do, I, I do a lot of research and I've been looking at a lot of uh, videos and a lot of uh, motivational speakers and, and they got it down to a science. They give all the principles of Jesus Christ but they don't give Jesus Christ because if they give Jesus Christ, now they got to be responsible. There is a responsibility that comes with Jesus Christ. That's why we don't take Jesus Christ. Because when we do, there's a responsibility. Now, when we got Jesus Christ, I don't know, you, you could go uh, walk down the street uh, by yourself, but when you walk down the street with your three-year-old daughter or niece or you throw with a three-year-old little girl, you got another responsibility now. You can't do the same, you shouldn't do the same things that you do when you by yourself. Because now I have a responsibility. You understand? I've got somebody looking at me and I got somebody responding to me. And now I can't just act any kind of way. You can sense it too. You can sense it. The little Lord can sense it. I had every reason last night to be bad. Everybody knows I got a box room. I apologized last night. Wow. No, bro. I had to spend time with my lady in the Okay. I didn't say no more. I didn't say no more. I didn't say no more. About an hour after that, we walked out about the kid's room. I took him back to the motel and we had to walk him from uh, the extended scale of the Valley Point Drive. We, we, we got on the hole and we giggled around the way home. Wow. It was, it was amazing. We did that because I, I spent you know, $80 something dollars at the motel room. I didn't even stay there for an hour and a half. Wow. We walked all the way back. We didn't get fussed up one time. We wow. We giggled and laughed all the way home. Oh, so. Here's the thing let us get Jesus Christ today. Yeah. Because Jesus Christ has left us the Holy Spirit. And the good thing about the Holy Spirit, he knows everything. The Holy Spirit is not going to, he's going to, the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is going to come and teach you all things. Everybody say all. all. Do you know what all is? All is all. Yeah, he's going to teach you everything. He's going to teach you how to be a better manager of money. He's going to teach you how to be better health. You'll be amazed at how much better 
your health will become if you simply listen to Jesus Christ. But you know what I come, come to on. understand? I come to understand it's better to pray than just ask because when you pray, you have patience. Yes, sir. It's going to come on time. It's going to come on when time. When you ask for it, you're going to get it before you know it and you're going to know what to do with it. You don't know that yeah. you know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I feel what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, let me, since you said that, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> I want to show everybody something right now. I want to show everybody God. I'm going to show you what God looks like. Y'all ready to see this? Yeah. Man, you don't got to be telling me the truth, but I'm going to show you how God looks. Today is December the 10th, 2020. That's his mama's birthday. Mm. I need for you to rewind your tape back to two, December the 10th, 2019. That's all I need you to do. And look at where you are now to where you were then. And you got to see that ain't no way you could have made it to this point. Not, you couldn't explain how I got from there to here. I have a lot more there, but I feel a lot better now. Yes, sir. A lot more there, but I feel something better. Yeah, because God is blessing. Everybody, I explain that. I know my family. Everybody, I know my family. 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 I know my now I got full custom. Full custom. But let me tell you something, though. See? Listen, though. Understand something. No matter what. I, <laughs> thank you, brother. Because I ain't want you to be saying, I had to work hard. I had to. No. 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 God, I'm showing y'all how God works. Yes, sir. There's nothing you could have done to make what you made happen. Listen, I'm finna shut down. We way past our time. Let me tell you something. God, God, listen. I, 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 I had a, I had a son. He's, he was born in 1993, right? He, he, he doesn't speak to me now. You know that, that that's painful. That, that's painful. Matter of fact, I was telling my wife uh, yesterday. I, I had a dream that me and my son was having a talk. That's that's a dream. I mean, you. People say, are you just dreaming about having a talk with your son? That ain't, anybody could do that. I can't do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I ain't did nothing to stop that. My point, as a matter of fact, I, I was living in Germany, right? Mm. I flew all the way from Germany all the way to small town Georgia, and I get to the door, hey, I'm here from Germany to see my son. And she said, oh, he at the grocery store. He can't see you. Can I, I'll come back. Oh, he ain't going to be able to see you the whole two weeks. You, could you imagine the pain? Yeah, yeah. Now, my son grows up and says, you didn't want to see me. You don't understand the pain that I went through to try to see you, and I couldn't. You understand? So my yeah. point is, for you being able to see your son, I'm just trying to get you for, from a firsthand experience, the pain that I feel. You see what I'm saying? So I know that there is a blessing from the Lord for you to be able to see your son. You see what I'm saying? So uh, now, understand, now that you've got full custody, that's just, that's not the end. That's the beginning. Yes, sir. Now you really need God. Now, if you mess around here and you be dirty from two, December 10th, 2020, all the way, you're going to be you unstable. And guess what? That stuff going to fall off the table. So you better get Jesus Christ right now. You don't really have a choice. You can really say something. <laughs> all I'm saying is I, I'm just I'm campaigning for Jesus Christ that's right I need for you to get Jesus Christ in your life and 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 how 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 do I know I have Jesus Christ in my life well I'm gonna tell you it's then it, it's not all about you anymore my wife told me that yesterday I got a problem, bro. We walked by, I can't tell, I told her I was going to that. My wife's free. I don't like this, man. Stay out of there. Right. We walked by, I stayed out. I snapped about it, you know what I mean? Right. But my wife said, you got to get him, it ain't all about you. I made me mad at him. It made me mad when she told me, it ain't all about you. Right. It made me mad when I walked to my stair. The stair is just on her. It's not all about, go ahead. You got a question. Well, what about you being, bro? Okay, it's not all about you and everything, so if I can't put on my turn, it's not about me. Love everybody and stuff like that. And um, one of the things, one of my brother um, Journey said, what was it? I think he said, walk by faith. Not by sight. 
not by sight. And I feel everybody on that stuff right now, but like I've been trying to tell them and stuff like that right now. Your past is just, I can say my past is a terrible thing, but I learned to accept stuff, man. Mm. I'm glad you be coming up here and stuff like that. Amen. Yeah, man. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ one time, uh, people, you need to read the Bible because if you don't, yeah. you'll listen to people talk about the Bible and miss That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was walking on water one night, right? And it was a great storm. When they show it on Hollywood, the waters are all cool and calm, but the Bible says it was a great storm. I don't know if you've ever been on the sea before and seen how it looks, but when it's a great storm, you don't want to be out there. But he was walking on water. The truth is that the Bible declares that he was getting ready to pass them. He was, it wasn't about them on the boat because he had already said, let us go to the other side. So he wasn't walking to them. He was just walking to I guess he had a mission. He was something more important than them on the water. Right. He was walking, and they called, hey, if it be you, hey, Jesus, we over here. You know, it ain't that he didn't know they were there. It ain't that he didn't see them, but he had, he was focused on what he, my point. What we have to do is we have to, first of all, we have to focus. These are some eyes, some glasses. We have to focus on what God told us to do. You understand? I don't believe that you can make it. You can't go to Rockford's class. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You can't make it. Come on. Another question. Okay, now how can I focus on that when Jesus Christ got me to do it? What Jesus Christ has you to do? Well, that's exactly right. And here's the thing. What you have to do, we have to be like what he said. Get our spiritual fitness together. We have to make some. See, here's the thing. God has told all of us something. And what he told you is different than what he told me. What he told you is different than what he told me. How would I know, Pastor? No more answer. How would you I sacrifice? Get in this word. This is the instruction, man. And the thing about the word is, now, some people are going to say, but I don't really understand the word. That's okay. Just read the word. See, what it does is restructures your mind. See, no, matter, no I don't care how much of a genius you are. You can't, it's, you, see, some people say, you know, you pick up a cookbook and say, how do I bake a chocolate cake, right? Once I finish reading step one through 40, and look, there's a chocolate cake on the table. The Bible doesn't work that way. You're not going to pick this book up and say, how do I know to stay focused on Jesus Christ? You're not going to pick this book up, read it, and say, okay, now I know. No, what's going to happen is, because first of all, you're not going to understand a lot of it. Yep. This has confounded the wisest men in the world. But if you're three years old and you say, Jesus loves me, yes, I know. You all, that's all you need to know. So you need to read this word because what it does is it, 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 it um, what do you call it when you go to a house and you, and you, um, and you restructure it? Like you, let's remodel it. It remodels your mind. It remodels your mind so your way of thinking is going to shift. Without you, you don't have to, the Holy Spirit is going to do all of that. You just stay focused on the word. I challenge you to open the Bible from page one and go to the end. I'm not telling you do it in a year. It might take you 14 years to read the whole Bible. Don't let nobody tell you. You should have been done that in a year. You don't, this ain't about you. It might, you might do it in a month. Hey. I've been, I've been trying to get through the Bible now at least five years. And I ain't even made it through the whole Bible. I know at least five years. I picked up page one and said, I'm going to go through it. And I've been working on it five years. Mm -hmm. Now, some of my uh, religious scholar friends might say, what's taking so long? Well, God working with me <laughs> at my pace. There you go. And God's going to work with you at your pace. So pick up this word, read it from the front to the back, and your mind will be, it shall be, remodeled. Huh? Even if you don't understand it, just read it. Just keep. Just eat it. Just keep eating. That's it. Don't. What that is when you say I don't understand it. Who is the author of confusion? Anybody know? The devil. So he gonna make sure that you don't read. He gonna he gonna do all he can to make you not read this Bible. That's why you got to deny him that privilege. I'm gonna read the Bible anyway. Just take it from the beginning to the end. Somebody told me to start off in gospel. You can. I see, that's why I say I don't tell people how to fast. I don't tell people how to give. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you it's important that you fast and give. You can't that, only read the Bible. You got to live by the Bible. Just, I'm just saying read it. Yeah. Because, look, <clears throat> here's the thing. 
when you're dealing with any subject, let's just say you're a doctor, right? If you're a doctor and you only know what the book says, you're going to be all right, but you ain't gonna, they ain't going to be calling you all over the world. You got to know what's in the book, plus you got to know, like you say, how to walk that walk now. Huh? If you're a hairstylist and the only thing you know is what they taught you in school, yeah, you got your license, but you ain't going to be getting called in the middle of, you ain't going to be getting called by the celebrities. You got to have some, you got to have some talent is what I'm saying. And that talent, God, all of us have a natural talent right now. A gift. A gift. You didn't earn it. God gave it to you. And we have to know that our talents are a gift from God. You see what I'm saying? Whatever your talent is. You got to recognize it though. You got to recognize it. But, but now before you recognize it, the devil going to try to use it. Well, yeah, okay. We got so many pharmacists, guys that should be on the corner running a CVS on the corner running an a, a illegal drug operation. Because if you can sit there and balance and do all them yeah. drugs and make them good, you need to be working in CVS somewhere, man. Real estate or something, man. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be doing something. If you can do all, if you, because you got to, in order, I really ain't never dealt drugs, but if you, in order to deal drugs successfully, you got to have a talent. Yeah. Business. Yeah. You got to be a business. Man. If you bold enough to go rob somebody, you need to be working security for the president or something. Oh, the army one. Army are doing something <laughs> with it, man. Using that gift for the glory. Those are gifts. You understand? You know, whatever your gift that, and what has happened, the devil has robbed you. He has taken your focus off Jesus Christ, and he's putting your focus on something else. So I'm just trying to get your focus back on Jesus Christ. Right. Why? It's two words that I put up here every week, and they're going to be up here every week. Why? Because he's our Lord and Savior. And Savior. And Savior. Understand something. We can receive him right now as our Savior. That's that's the easiest part you can ask me. Because if if I'm in a if I'm in a situation, if I'm in the middle of the ocean, I don't know if you ever been on the ocean before, where you can't see land. <laughs> I was I was in Puerto Rico, man, and you know when you live on the island, you get used to it. And you know Puerto Rico, it's got a lot of little islands. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I was, I, you know, when I go, I do, I don't do the, the tourist attraction. I go out there at the boonies where you ain't gonna never go. So I'm out there in the boonies, and they was like, yeah, yeah. You know, we swim from this island to that island. That, that island was, I was like, man, that thing is out there. But if you're a native, you probably could. Or they probably was just lying to me just to get me to jump in there and say, hey, look, <laughs> once I get so far, I don't know what it was, but they, see, I'm smart enough to know where I ain't finna jump out there and try it, you know? I, yeah, I'll I put my feet in the water and run around, but I ain't finna go try to swim to that island out there, because if I can't make it, I'm in big trouble. Some of us are in the middle of trying to swim from one island to the next, and we're in trouble. So we need a savior, you understand? Help, help, save me, somebody. That's what we need. But to understand the problem that we have so often is when we get in the boat, the first thing the captain is going to say is, hey, take off those wet clothes, put on this, or I don't know what he's going to say. Here, drink some coffee. Whatever. I don't know. Because you probably got hypothermia. I don't know. He's going to start telling you what to do. And if you get on the boat and say, look, captain, I'm not going to do it. Really, the captain might be like, I need to throw you back over the boat. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you why. You're going to make me, you're going you gonna to mess my hand, it's die on my ship. It's a Yeah, you're going to die, and now I got another issue on my boat. Right. Yeah, oh, that's God. what we're doing to Jesus Christ when we out here thinking we can do whatever we want to do. Look at here, uh, bro. I'm going to have to throw you off the boat <laughs> for being stubborn and hard-headed. Mm -hmm. You know what we agreed to. You know what you said you were going to do. When I do the life... Wrap up there. You say, I do it, I do it, I do it. But as soon as I get you in the boat, okay. oh, well, I don't eat that. I don't drink, you know, all that other stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> because now we don't want to accept him as our Lord. We need Jesus Christ as our Lord. He's going to tell us what to do. And if there be one person today that says, you know what? I do need Jesus Christ as my Lord. I do need stability in my life. I've got to change from here this day, there tomorrow, this way, like this, like that tomorrow. I've got to become more stable. We didn't even get to the point where he says, uh, thou anointest my head with oil. Yeah. The anointing represents the relationship. When you anointed, 
you you connected. We're connected. We're family. Some of us haven't called our family in a long time. And I'm going to tell you why you haven't called your family, because of miscommunication. You need to get that communicated. We didn't even, matter of fact, out of all the stuff we put on our table, we didn't even put family up there. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we skipped family. Okay. We, we skipped it though. Friend, I, I didn't make the list. We made the list. I'm, I, I'm just as guilty as everybody. We got friends. We can say that's family, but family is different than friends. Totally. And we need our family. We need our family. So we need to get connected. Jesus Christ wants to be a part of our family. How? Through the anointing. Why does he want to anoint us and be part of our family? Because he wants that cup to run over, not just fill up. And, and, and not the waste. We're not wasteful. You see what I'm saying? We're not wasting. Um, when my dad used to drink coffee, he used to put it on a saucer. So if any of it yeah, spilled yeah. over, yeah. he would pour it back in the cup and still drink that too. We're not wasting this anointing. We're not wasting these blessings. All right, my son? We need to get our table straight. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We need you. We ask you now to have mercy upon us. Lord God, some of us, we are unstable. Help us to get stable. Help us to do your will right now, which is the most important thing in the holy and magnificent name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Thank you. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well, We have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.